Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. Max Lord has been at the controls for folks like Juice World, Cardi B, and Offset. You're going to meet him in just a second. But first, time for the grand prize winner of the Pensado Ultimate Vocal Sweepstakes, brought to you by Auto-Tune. Trim roll, please. The winner is... Alexander Asante Tanner. Congratulations. Alexander, you're taking home Auto-Tune Unlimited, the AKG C314 mic. You're going to get a priceless one-hour session with Quentin Q. Gilkey. And maybe best of all, you're coming on the show with Dave and I. So we'll be in touch with you. And congratulations to all you guys who entered and those who won. More stuff coming. Good job, Auto-Tune. Um, now another thing we want you guys to do is make sure you sign up for NAMM's Believe in Music Week. It's January 18th through the 22nd. It is a great interactive program where you get to meet your heroes, learn about new product, acquire new product, collaborate creatively, get educated. It is absolutely incredible. NAMM really does it better than anybody else. They're just a bunch of lovable music geeks who want to make sure you're included. First time global, first time free. Sign up, nam.org, and we'll see you there. Um, also, Pensado's got to have some fun in the holidays, so we've got 12 days of Christmas giveaway. On Christmas Day, I'm going to come back and announce 12 winners of plugins from Mike Dean, plugins from DJ Swivel, plugins from Dave, and plugins from our good friends at Leapwing. You're going to dig that, so get your names in right away. We had the incredible honor of being um, celebrated by the Latin Grammys last week. It, it, you can go to their website and see the interview. We are enamored and in awe of the craftsmanship of that community and the fact that they care about Pensado's Place. We thank you so much, specifically to Mugi, Cheche, Livies, Laura, and the rest of the team. We are humbled by that. Um, also, we're going to do a 2020 WTF, yes, what the, you know what, uh, episode that is going to talk about this crazy year. It will run between Christmas and New Year's. We go from Keith Urban to Haim, rock to hip hop, NAM to NASA, managers to manufacturers. You're going to hear them all, and it's info you can use. It'll be a good hour for you to watch. Um, just want to say from Dave and I, happy holidays to each and every one of you, wherever you exist in our gorgeous planet. We love you for your support. You're our present uh, every Christmas. So we want to thank you. We also want to thank the folks that make this show come to you for free. Sweetwater, awesome partner. Just incredible. Nam, same thing. Folks like Antares, the Grammy P&E wing, Harmon Carden, Band Paid, Leap Wing, the list goes on. We got some big things planned in 2021, some big folks coming on board. We are super excited, and we would be nothing without your support. And now, enjoy the very talented Max Lord. 808 Mafia from Aspen, Colorado. Who knew that a hip-hop don could emerge from there? Welcome to the episode, Max Lord. Max, what's happening? Howdy, when you gave the intro, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I wonder every day. Well, listen, uh, you seem to have proven the point. That's for sure. When you think about, you know, all the different folks you worked with, Cardi B, Playboy Cardi, Future, Travis. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the guy that I want to jump right into and have you give our perspective on, Jared Anthony Higgins, better known as Juice World. Um, talk about his meaning, what you learned, the whole yeah, thing. Well, learning was essentially everything because he is an inspiring person um, and a prolific artist at that. Um, I've never seen anything like him. I don't know if I ever will again. And it's something I'm just 
eternally grateful I was able to be around for and when I was and thankfully able to see it or feel it early on to just drop everything I was doing to make sure I could be with him. What did you learn from him? <sighs> Never doubt a single soul on the planet mm. was okay. the, the, the real takeaway. And that was something I figured out early on too. Mm. Um, you know, he, he really taught me, I, you never know who somebody could be if, if they try and, and what somebody is capable of achieving. Mm -hmm. Because when we met him, you know, it was before a lot happened in his life. And yeah. then next thing you know, he's a, you know, sensation. And, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say overnight because he did a lot of work when he was younger to get there, but man if you didn't know about that it was it seemed like it did just happen yeah instantaneously so um that was the biggest lesson i learned from him what what uh what i want to while we're talking about juice on on come and go is that a real guitar is it a loop of a guitar or is it a um it is a it is a real guitar so um originally um my buddy gezin and i um had made that the, uh, the there's essentially the beginning of the song and then where the song grew and what it grew into. Mm -hmm. um, so my buddy Gezin and I, um, you know, had made a beat that Juice did that song to, and then you know, over time, I think maybe six or eight months after it was done, it was you know we realized it was kind of you know may, it might be a song that gets shelved essentially. Mm -hmm. So we thought like, wow. This really has like a kind of EDM or pop buildup. Like we should, uh, we should hit up Marshmallow. I think maybe he can figure something out with it. Mm -hmm. So I sent it over to to Mello, and man, within three days he hit me back, and he was he was because we've we've worked with um, with Juice and, and with Marshmallow before. It's like an introduction I tried to make for quite a bit of time, mm -hmm. and. You know, he hit me back a couple of days later. Marshmallow is like, "Yo, you got to hear this. I've, I swear, I haven't been able to make like a real marshmallow song in 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 months, and it just came so so quickly. I think I did this in two hours, and sent it over. And it, it you know, he went and put a guitar over it and re reworked the whole thing and made it into a exactly what we hoped it would be. You know, we heard that there was some potential here." to make a big record and then lo and behold you know i guess we were right <laughs> um are, are, did you ever go to a school or are you are you self-taught mostly self-taught i tried to go to a school but i really used it as an excuse to live in england so i was enrolled in london school of sound which doesn't exist anymore and i uh you know, I went maybe three or four times and they were trying to make me use Pro Tools. But at the time I just made, you know, kind of dubstep and EDM and Ableton was thinking like, I don't need to know how to use Pro Tools. <laughs> like, this is boring. I'm, I'm out of here. And then, you know, I went to class literally three or four times. But I, but I really appreciate the hustle to go to England. That, that's some old school. Well, rock. Yeah. I mean, I loved living there because, uh, at the time, you know, being very involved with dubstep, which is, you know, why I knew Marshmallow. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, or, you know, everyone I knew lived in London because that's where it comes from. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was in Colorado and in Denver before that and just needed to go anywhere else on the planet. So yeah. <laughs> I had friends in London and decided, okay, how do I get there? Well, just as, as a Colorado sort of, intersecting points one is my cousin who lived was from boulder rode for the olympic team in some year but even sexier than that two sexier things our producer talisha is from colorado and my dad was a scout for the denver broncos back in the day okay that's cool the denver broncos are the coolest thing on the planet if you're really from colorado you you know that and I saved that for the end because I knew it would have that kind of kind of impact. Let's go back to Juice World for a second. <laughs> One of the things about his influences that are fascinating to me 
is there's an equal amount of rock influences as there are rap influences. And he also, as an artist, had the vision to kind of be a emo guy. Like he, you know, there was emotion and stuff that he would translate in his, tell me about. I wouldn't necessarily call his translation of emotion into his music emo, but he did have a lot of bands that he liked that were kind of emo bands. Got it. Um, so he did have a very eclectic music taste mm-hmm. and a very eclectic influences um, on his music because of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we would listen to Jimi Hendrix or Led Zeppelin or Three Days Grace or, man, there were some bands that I don't even remember the name that he listened to that were kind of more early, mid-2000s rock and roll that, you know, I've no, had never heard of until he would play it. Um, Day Wave was one of his favorites, who's kind of similar to Tame Impala, which mm-hmm. he liked also. Mm-hmm. And then was obsessed with Lil Wayne, rapper called Lucky from Chicago. Uh, he put me onto St. John very early before that mm-hmm. was really a thing. Yep. Um, so he had very eclectic music taste, you know, Gucci Mane. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he knew who Southside was when he met him. And you know, couldn't believe he's in the room or staying at his house. Huh. And, and uh, I think your point is correct that it was more that all these things informed his music. I don't think they made him one thing or the other. But no, they didn't. You nobody can make him one thing or the other. Right, right. But right. Um, they but definitely th- informed because there were times when knowing how much he loved Daywave and that style of music where I would try to figure out like, how do they, how do they make their voice sound like this? Right. right. Um, so one day I literally figured it out at least ballpark. And he was like, juice, I figured it out. He comes running into the room and we make, you know, some songs that sound just, you know, in the, in the style of it. And they're freaking cool songs. Like right. I think it's one of the ones we did is my, one of my favorite three songs we ever did. Mm. And it sounds like a Tame Impala song almost. Yeah. Um, how did I, um, I got a little bit of insight because uh, my dear friend Rafael Fadul, uh, better known as Come to Brazil, I, uh, we spoke, so I got cheated and got a little bit of insight info on you. But uh, man, describe some of the things you guys went through when you were working on that. You and he mixed it, and you got. I, I don't know. I don't know if we're getting into NDA areas, but. But there were some there were some obstacles that you had to overcome, and, and yeah. So the song "Smile" with the weekend was an interesting mix, absolutely, because we got hit up with very tight deadlines for it to come out, um, and a and a session which was all over the place in terms of where uh, different parts were. So we got sent the Pro Tool session. I had to track down the the track out from from Nick Mira, and essentially the session was at a different tempo than the beat. <laughs> um, so the weekend had recorded his part at the sped up tempo, mm-hmm. while the juice session was at I think one fifty, and then the weekend was at one fifty one point eight. Mm-hmm. I believe it was 151.8. And you got a deadline, man. That's crazy. And, and then the stems are at 150, maybe. I don't It was at one of the two. So we had to time stretch everything, slow it down, speed it up, and get everything back into one session. And I was so happy I asked Rafa to help me on this because I was peeing my pants trying to figure out all that technical stuff with yeah. getting... The session sped up, slowed back down, not time stretched, not sample aliases and getting everything messed up. Yeah. Knowing, you know, and we got the weekend on here. It's like, I was scared. So I, I called Rafa like, look, this is, this is going to be a big deal. <laughs> um, you know, knowing, especially him working with you, he's very technical and knows all of that sort of stuff. He said the same about you. He's, he says that you're one of the most technical people he knows. I never was in a situation where I got the... Uh, the session setup knowledge the same way he does and, and kind of more, you know, and things, things having to do with messing with tempos and, you know, I, I can, but he, he knew exactly what to do. Yeah. And thankfully he did. 
And luckily, um, the weekends engineer was able to answer my phone call at three in the morning to to get us the certain parts from from the weekend. Like everything was missing, and it was it was a, a headache, but we we were able to make it happen. What a great song, though. Turned out great. Thank thank goodness, because it wasn't recorded very well. Um, you know, and we did what we could to work with it. And shout out Colin Leonard for working his magic afterwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that Colin's a beast. Yeah. He, he reminded us when <laughs> <laughs> he will do that. Yeah. So Max, if you, if some, it, you know, there's different parts to Max. There's the engineer, there's the producer. You got songwriting credits on certain records. Is there a Max Lord signature in your producing engineering style? Um, the main thing I kind of adhere to is that, you know, engineering is, is my day job and I love it. I'm lucky enough to have a job that I love. Mm -hmm. And producing for me was always kind of something I did because I enjoyed it, but not something I ever thought in my life I could do for a living. Mm -hmm. And because I've always kind of treated it as my hobby, I, a couple of things, I don't want it to, I don't want to make it my job because there's a lot of pressure there and I don't want to ruin the, the fun that I have doing it. Right. So if I'm making beats, then something happens and, you know, let's, if future raps on it for some reason, oh. great. Awesome. You know, everything that happens with producing is uh, kind of a bonus. Mm -hmm. And then I really keep the engineering and producing kind of separate because if, if an artist hires me to, to record them or to mix a song or, if, you know, if I'm in, in the studio for a week or two with somebody, I didn't get asked to be there as a producer. I got asked to be there as an engineer. Mm -hmm. So I make sure to, to take my job very seriously and do what I'm there to do, which is to help that artist make their music and record songs and not to try to, you know, get my beats played. Yeah. I mean, you know, if somebody asked specifically, yo, do you have any beats you've made? Yeah, sure. But I'm not going in there with that kind of mindset, but I will go and pull up on somebody to not work who, and, and do that. But you know, it's very distinct, different things. Yeah. You've got, I'm to not really trying to mix business and pleasure. Yeah. And I, and I think that's, that is actually a sign of a veteran because there's nothing worse with other vets to be pitched and hocked and pushed up on and all that shit. That's, that's yeah. And, and it's like, cool. You, I, you didn't bring me here for one reason, just to have me do, do something else. And, and, and you likely won't be back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I like, I like my job, so yeah, I exactly. take it seriously. And, um, that's that's something I appreciated about about Juice a lot was when it came to to engineering, um, a lot of those walls were able to be broken down too. Where it was just a much more cr overall creative environment. Where um, you know when it came to ideas and and writing or production minded things, we we're able to kind of do everything. Mm -hmm. um, where instead of just being a guy there to hit three and get somebody's voice into the computer mm -hmm. you know it was a much more engaged environment mm -hmm. uh, where those those lines could get blurred a little bit more what was it like living with uh offset and cardi b all those weeks um you lived at their house it's happened a, it's happened a few times over the years i actually kind of ditched them at one point to go be with juice early on mm -hmm. and then offset thought i was crazy and reminded me of that yeah. and, um, <laughs> and then i uh you know got back with him in december and have uh you know was with them throughout the entire quarantine and we we're staying up at the house and had a studio up there and um you know also just a good friend he's a good guy and um it's it's an interesting household but you know it's not as crazy as you might think it is <laughs> Did uh, did Cardi ever go off on you? She's such a sweetheart. Really? She, oh my god, I love her so much. Honestly, uh, <laughs> she um, breath of fresh air that the industry really needed at the time. Yeah, no, honestly, she's she's one of the nicest people I think I've ever met, and wow. so friendly. And um, 
everyone around her too. Like, you know, you had uh, Evan Larray on here who I'm yeah. pretty good friends with because of that. Uh, yeah. you know, we've had to travel a lot together because of, you know, Cardi and Offset being together. So um, he's another person that kind of like Rafa, I kind of try to collaborate with a lot and, you know, learn from each other and, um, and work with. And um, actually I'm supposed to be kind of sp- splitting the space with him, but he's been in New York. So hopefully he comes back. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a good group of people. Very much so. What's your, um, what's your rig set up? What do you work on? Um, okay. So like I was telling you guys before we started, I've like not had my own studio to myself to call home in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's kind of basic, but you know, I've just got a vocal chain with uh, a GML mic pre mm-hmm. tube tech. Um, and then, you know, a, a Bay Neve pre a Bay. 1176 and shadow hills compressor mm-hmm. for hardware stuff um and then a uh, apollo just going into the computer with like five different uad cards essentially <laughs> um i do i think the biggest instrument or piece of equipment that i have is probably the pmcs mm. which are my favorite speakers ever made um obviously the the bigger ones are just those are probably my favorite things ever made but Um, I started, you know, when I was in England, I heard PMCs for the first time and was just blown away. I thought it was the speakers from the end of the Italian job that like (laughs) blow the woman's clothes off. Um, It was that 1087 mastering. Great reference. And, you know, he turned up the volume and I literally, like, I felt my insides vibrating and everything. So I had not, I didn't see them again for seven years. Mm. There's one studio in Los Angeles that had them, and then Metropolis in London had them. And um, they released a more affordable pair of speakers, the results that I got. And, you know, it opened up a whole thing, a whole level, like a whole area in music that I wasn't used to hearing. Mm. And then, um, you know, financed some really big ones that I hope I uh, can pay for. Um, but I, I had a pair of these at, at Juice's house also, the uh, IB1S, and it, they just make life easier. Like I can literally record a song and bounce it, and it probably sounds better than it sounds good, you know. When and everything I do, you know, they're essentially mastering speakers for for working on everything on. And um, yeah, that, I would say they they've helped me more than anything. Fantastic. to get the right clarity the right balance and everything out of out of my music recently and uh, i forgot i think you said it uh either before we started the show but what what daw are you using um i use pro tools oh you do okay um, yeah so i make beats with ableton oh, okay is my favorite program ever made just because of how flexible it is and what you can do inside of it i have a few friends that use it to mix um pretty seriously Mm -hmm. and um you know i I had to learn pro tools at some point and obviously you know we we use it for recording because i I don't think there's anything better for recording vocals or at least instruments than pro tools you know it's it's built for it so pro tools is is great i love it and then ableton is more great and i love it a little bit more (laughs) so i'm playing for fruity loops that's the next one uh are you a big plug-in guy too um, I was, and then I got used to what I have. Mm-hmm. So, um, honestly, I, I use a lot of UAD plugins mm-hmm. so that if somebody opens my session that shouldn't, or if they don't have all the UAD plugins I have, then they shouldn't be opening the session, <laughs> but if it falls into the wrong hands, essentially. Right. Um, but then if somebody has all the same plugins I do, they deserve to open it and work in it. <laughs> uh, so I use, I use a ton of UAD plugins for everything and they, they sound incredible. Right. Um, but it's also like a security measure of sorts. Yeah. Are, you more, are you more analog on the recording side and more digital on the mix I, side? I try to use it analog gear as much as I can. 
because I I'm a nerd about that stuff and it's my favorite when I first started making beats so you know I had an MPC and wouldn't use a computer at all or an MPC and a record player and a tape machine and refused to to use the computer um and then, you know, I, I, I used Ableton one time. I was like, oh, it's just like an MPC in the computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> um, so then when it, I, you know, I'd always been kind of a nerd about gear that, you know, I never really knew I'd have a chance to use, you know, when I was 16, 18, 20. Um, and then as I started working more, I got to start using the gear. So I'd already learned so much about it. Um you know, whether reading about it, looking at pictures, reading the UAD manuals and and, and seeing what all the plugins actually are emulating. Um, so every time I see a piece of gear, I'm excited to use it. And, you know, once I was able to start using it hands on, figuring out um, the certain tones I can get out of it versus the computer versions mm-hmm. or the certain tones uh, a, a really kind of dirty and not taken care of 1073 will have versus of a versus a Bay 1073 or a Brent Avril one. So, um, yeah. And as much as I can, I use gear. Um, even if I have a plugin on a session and I'm at a big studio and we have extra time there, I'll try to replace it with the hardware. See if it sounds better. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I ever three, see a three, three, six, Oh nine, neve compressor i'm gonna try to use it i love that thing so much um i've been trying to use the 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 rmx 16 or rms 16 whatever whatever it is because i've been using that in the computer a lot and then i've been trying to use the hardware which is kind of digital in nature so i don't know if it really makes that big of a difference it's the same it's the same it's the same code but uh, at one point in time, I had four of them, and I could only get one to work. <laughs> they're, 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 they're temperamental, but boy, did they sound good. So I was trying to figure out how to program it and, and do all that, but it was kind of a pain, and that one I figured might just be better in the computer. Yeah. Um, but I love the sound of that, so that's something that I've yeah, been exactly. using a lot. And, um, and then when it comes to gear, you know, I, I, I do I'm, – I'm interested in – trying to work on my own gear as much as I can. So I try to talk to Jess Jackson about that a lot, who, you know, hit me up like, oh, you have a U87. We've got to, we've got to change all the op amps and, and we should, we got to mod your mic and do all this. I'm like, okay, great. So I got back to LA cause we were on tour and he told me that. And then I uh, couldn't get a hold of. <laughs> so I was like kind of sick of waiting. So I just, I was able to find one of those um, inner tube mods. For the microphone because the 67 is one of my favorite mics yeah and i can't afford one so mm-hmm. i was able to find the the tube mod kit and um you know just swapped out all the internals on the mic and uh was able to find a super fancy tube to put in there like a new old stock tube um an old siemens i think and mm-hmm. uh you know do it without jess but <laughs> man it sounds really good and and i was really happy i did because juice at the you know i was with him when i built it needed a tube microphone and i didn't have access to one Mm. so Mm. was able to make it happen and i'm so happy i did that because it sounded incredible through it um swapped out all the tubes and my tube tech with different ones just because you know if everyone has a u87 or a c800 and a tube tech and a 1073 like what can we do to at least sound a tiny bit different and get a little bit different of a tone? Absolutely. Um, question, question for you before Baverage Box. What's what, what's on the bucket list, Max Lord moving forward? What kind of stuff are you working on? Do you want to work on? Where are you going? So I've I'm historically a tracking engineer. I do a lot of working with people in the studio and a lot of recording. Mm-hmm. Um but as I've gotten a little bit older, it just doesn't feel very healthy schedule wise. You know, I've been treating my body like crap. Mm -hmm. So I've been recently mixing a lot more and, you know, a lot of us get into this to be a mix engineer. You know, we looked up to Dave and we looked up to Manny. We looked up to certain people that, you know, they mix and, you know, that's what we is the prestigious thing essentially. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to be able, I'm lucky enough now to be getting work for mixing more than just going into the studio. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where my main focus is right now. Oh, cool. Um, you know, I want to, I've been making more beats and more actual music, which is, you know, another thing I want to focus on where if I can sit in my room and make beats and mix and never have to leave, I'll be happy. But, you know, I, I love working with people and actually collaborating in person. I don't think there's really anything like it. And that's where I got a question for you. Um, um, when you work with a, with a rap artist, uh, you, it seems like you have one setup and setting and, and, and concept for that. And then when you work with a singer, do you have another complete, mostly different setup and process? Or, or is it mo- yeah, so when, when I first kind of right after I first got to LA, I was lucky enough to be brought to a um, session by a, a DJ friend of mine where he was working on music for My Little Pony. And here's a drum and bass DJ. So it was kind of interesting juxtaposition, but um, he, he needed a ride up there and he was like, Oh, well, you know, you're into this stuff anyways, you should come. And, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know how to use pro tools. I didn't know crap at the time. And when we got there, the, uh, the engineer that they had for these songwriting sessions was um, this guy named Mike Jers, who had just broken his leg and was like, hobbling across the studio to go into the booth and adjust the microphone between takes for everybody and you know it just looked painful i've broken everything i know how it feels and um you know asked him like hey do you like need help um and started assisting for him and you know he started showing me how to use pro tools and 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 really learning everything um and he had a certain way that you know, he has his Pro Tools set up and that's how I, I first learned how to use it and was in a, a songwriter environment doing demos for for pop music. You know, we did like it was Jason Derulo, Pitbull, you know, guys like that, aside from just doing these songs for My Little Pony, which was funny for its own reasons. Um, but he had a setup where every single track had a full recording chain on it. Um, and it was very different from how a lot of hip hop engineers have their setup where you have a bus that has everything and then each track is essentially empty. Um, so I, at first was learning how to, you know, jump from record, you know, I have, we had a record track, but each track in the session had its own chain on it and then was getting blended. Even if it was, you know, huge stacks of harmonies, um i that kind of stuck with me how how he had it um, uh-huh. to work um you know because each 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 vocal each layer could have so many different things going on when it's in a different harmony how is the eq on a bus going to be the same for each vocal that's hitting a different note if all the fundamentals and the harmonics are different yeah that's um, cool that's very cool yeah, so we were able to get very intricate. And then for, you know, hip hop sessions, you can essentially just send everything to, you know, a couple buses, yeah. like a hook bus, a verse bus, an ad lib bus, and, you know, yeah. kind of be covered. Cool. So, Thanks for sharing that. That's pretty yeah. amazing. That's a headline right there. So, as a proud, as we alluded to earlier, Coloradan, mm-hmm. uh, a Denver Bronco fan, um, sports tradition there, really big. Uh, Nuggets made me nervous going up against my Lakers. Um, uh, they're they're a badass team in the West for sure. So um, you're going to represent um, Colorado, and Dave is going to represent Ebor City in this batter's box. Uh, uh, so um, uh, have at it. We're going to tee it up right now. That's right. Stretch loose. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, fire it up, Dave. Okay, limiting. All right, limiter, limitless. Mm-hmm. Right answer, by the way. Yeah. Bass. Hopefully guitars. Loops. Played out. MS, mid, side. Confusing. Favorite piece of outboard gear. 
Microphones. Uh, I'm microphone. I don't know. Oh, that's wrong. Try again. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Saturation. Oh, wait, wait. Shadow Hills Mono Opto. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, saturation. Necessary. Favorite vocal mic? Uh, U67. Inspiration. Dave Pensado. <laughs> well, that's wrong. Uh, reverb. RMX 16. Most annoying frequency you deal with? Everything in the middle. <laughs> and your favorite piece of, what, what, what was the cheapest gear you used on a song we might know? Um, oh, crap. Uh, probably a SM, no, wait, SM57? The drum mic? Is that what it's called? The drum, the drum, the right angled one? Yeah, the, the the little one that doesn't have like a capsule on it or the big yeah, capsule. I think that's the, I think that, I don't, I don't remember. SM57. That answer for cheapest gear was Raphael. So, really oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, listen, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And and I, and handled like a true Colorado. Not a lot of flash, but right, just hitting it and winning. I was just trying to go fast, but it didn't really work too well. <laughs> Colorado teams win. They just get it done. There's not a lot of history on it. They win in the fourth quarter, and we don't know how. Well, you know, that's a whole other thing. Colorado's are behind the entire game, every game, until the fourth quarter. And then, and then dramatics. Yeah. Um, look, man, one of the things uh, that is great about where we are, um, I want to hit you with a couple quick questions because um, – we're, we're going to do a perspective on 2020 that we call 2020 WTF. Mm-hmm. So four mm-hmm. really cool questions and we'll put together in a clip show at the end. Uh, what is the biggest impact in your mind of 2020 in a negative way? In a negative way. Oof. I, I, I think you know, it's, it's almost more, it's almost more personal and and in general, not personal, but like in general, not really with music um, is that it, it, it's annoying. It makes it harder to see family. Yeah. You know, I can't just go over to my grandma's house whenever I want. And my parents are scared of me. Yeah. Um, you know, it makes it harder to see some people that, that I wish I could. And by the way, most, almost everybody's answer has been generally about that, not technical, not music, not what are you after? We also think some good things came out of this mm-hmm. pandemic and isolation. What, what's been the, the green shoots, the, the potential positive things that, that you've seen? Um, I've seen at least, I'm going to bring this one back, back to music is people are working a lot more on music. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I wish that that juice was still here because if he just waited another couple months, you know, he was so sick of touring mm-hmm. and just wanted to make music. And we could have been sitting at home and making music for the last, you know, 10 yeah. months. Yeah. Um, but people are, people are working a lot. And, um, you know, a lot of people have realized, at least in the rap world that, you know, we didn't need concerts to survive. Um, mm-hmm. Luckily. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to still be busy. And, you know, still be in demand. And, you know, I kind of feel, I feel bad for, you know, I have a lot of DJ friends that haven't had the easiest time, but they've been able to figure out other ways and to engage their audiences better. And I feel like in some ways it's brought a lot of people closer together that weren't before. So if it's somebody like a DJ that, you know, survives off of, of touring and, and doing shows, they've been able to figure out, you know, some people at least how to engage with their, their fan bases more um, and, and uh, connect more with people than they did before. Last one. Um, what advice do you give to the young folks out there who feel like their career has been interrupted? How do they process handle? What do they do now? I mean, you can still, 
make music with your friends like that that never essentially stopped and that's what a lot of us are still doing Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. if you know i wouldn't just use it as an excuse to stay home and not do anything because everyone still needs to keep working towards their goals or else you're stopping yourself at this point and not corona stopping you from doing anything I, i agree and i think um by nature of what we do and what you guys do it's collaborative files are being sent a lot of us work separately and it doesn't mean that you can't collaborate more grow more and what a great time to expand your creativity learn something that you need to learn get influenced by something else you know i mean you've you've got to adapt to changing times and times changed a little bit more quickly than normal so absolutely max we were happy folks reached out. We've been laying for you and got you and love that you spent time with us. You know, we're fans of the work that you're doing, but we also end up being a bigger fan of the philosophy of the people that we meet. And you sometimes don't know to sit down with them and have that discussion. Um, excited to see what you go and do and continue to do. And man, never lower your bar. Do, do, do the max Lord wherever you go, bro. No, I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a dream of mine always to be here. I never yeah. thought it would actually happen like most things that have happened with me. So, Anytime you need us, we're here. Dave, why don't you wrap up? Take us home. Okay. Um, um, as, as the show was progressing, I kept thinking to myself, wow, that sounds like, like what I did in my career. Wow, that sounds like my, what I did in my career. Um, it's the only career I know, so I think it's the right way to do things. And I'm going to share some things with you that that we know about uh, uh, Max from what he said, and then some other some some other places. And I think he's doing everything so right. He's the poster child for how to get to the top as quick as possible with 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 uh, uh, a lot of effort. So so the, 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 this is going to take a second. Um, he, he really respects his equipment. He actually puts his microphones up by putting on cloth gloves when he does it. He collaborates. He, he enjoys collaborating. He brought in a, a, a career-altering mix uh, that could set him up forever. He brought in a friend. Who does that? Uh, he looks for any opportunity, whether it be uh, a, a lower-paying, a, 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 someone that's known, someone that's not known. And then... Um, um, he's he, he, we didn't talk about it today, but he he did live he did live uh, live mixing for, for Juice. He's done uh, tracking. He's done mixing for 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 big big artists. And so, wh- what more can I say? But uh, rewatch this uh, this video because I think you just heard from him the pathway to success. We'll see you next time.